In this lecture, we're going to look at the auto-ionization of water. Now, even the most purified form of water conducts some electricity. And that indicates the presence of ions found within our mixture. And since water is the only molecule present in our mixture, that means water must associate. And let's see exactly what happens. Remember, water can act as both a base and an acid. So what actually happens is two water molecules interact in such a way that one acts as a base and one acts as an acid. So one donates H and the other one accepts the H, forming a conjugate acid and a conjugate base, namely hydronium and hydroxide. And this process of dissociation is called autoionization, where the auto basically means that two water molecules interact and ionization means the dissociation of the two water molecules. Now, at equilibrium, reactants are favored, and that means equilibrium lies far to the left. So that means there will be many more water molecules than ions at any given temperature. So, equilibrium constant expression. So let's write the equilibrium constant expression for our reaction above. So remember, liquids are not included. Only aqueous solutions are included. So our KWR constant is equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. So KW in this case, when we talk about autoionization, is called the ionization constant for H2O. And this depends on temperature. And at 25 degrees Celsius, you should know that KW is 1.0 times 10 to negative 14. Now notice that our exponents here are 1 and 1. That's because we have 1 mole and 1 mole. <coughs> so, since we know our Kw, and from experiments we know that at a pH of 7, our concentration of hydronium is 1.0 times 10 to negative, 4, uh, uh, negative 7, that means since we know this guy and this guy, we can find the concentration of hydroxide. And we can do it by simply dividing through by 1.0 times 10 to negative 7, and we get x equals 1.0 times 10 to negative 7. So at a pH of 7, our concentration of hydronium equals that of hydroxide. Now, at any given temperature, the ionization constant will always remain the same. So at 25 degrees Celsius, this guy will always be 1.0 times 10 to negative 14. This will only increase with increase in temperature or decrease with decrease in temperature. This does not depend on the concentration of this guy nor on this guy. Now, if our hydronium concentration is greater than 1.0 times 10 to negative 7, that means our solution is acidic. If it's less than 1.0 times 10 to negative 7, it's basic. Likewise, if our hydroxide concentration is less than 1.0 times 10 to negative 7, it's an acidic solution. If it's more than 1.0 times 10 to negative 7, it's a basic solution. Now, in this last step, I want to look at the expression for Kw again. And my goal is to take this expression and convert it to this expression. This expression will be convenient when we know the pH and we want to find the pOH and when we know the pOH and we want to find the pH. So, to go from this guy to this guy, let's first look at a few things. Let's review. One of the laws of log states that log of x times y equals log x plus log y. The second part I want to look at is the formulas for pH and pOH. pH is equal to negative log of the hydronium concentration and pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. Now in part C, remember, at 25 degrees Celsius, our Kw will always be 1.0 times 10 to negative 14. Now if we want to take the pH of Kw, which is pKw, we simply write pKw is equal to negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, right? Now, I could either plug this guy into the calculator, or I could solve it in my head. Now, since we have a negative here and a negative here, negatives cancel, so we simply have 1 times 10 to the, negative four, to the 14th. 
So since our base is 10, I'll write it base 10. Since our exponent is what we don't know, we leave that blank. And since this is our result, we plug this into the result. So 10 to the what power gives you 10 to the 14th? Well, 14. So x is 14. So pkw is 14. So let's go back to here. kw is equal to hydronium times hydroxide. Log of base 10 of kw is equal to log of base 10 of this entire guy. Using part A, we simply distribute and we get log of kw is equal to log of this guy plus log of this guy. Now to use part B, I need to multiply the entire statement by negative 1. And now I can substitute. I bring this guy, the pH, into here. And I, this guy is simply pOH, uh, goes here. And this guy is simply pKW. And now from part C, I know that pKW is equal to 14. So this guy is equal to 14. And now this becomes very useful when I'm solving problems using pH and pOH.